All right, welcome back. I believe we are on episode number cinco. Is it five? Is that I don't speak Spanish. Episode cinco. That's five, I think. It that is five. It's five. It's we're at five. Yes, we're episode five, guys. Welcome to the Boom Fit Bros. We are your hosts and the only people on the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlie Lima and then myself, Gus Warden. And then, yeah. again, we have to do the shameless plug for C4 because they will eventually sponsor us. They Fueled just don't know by it. They C4. Just, they don't know it yet. Um, so, non paid endorser at the moment, but we will accept donations. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, last week we, uh, we got down a little bit more of the nitty gritty on uh, three more tips. Yeah, a little um, more complex. A little, a little bit more uh, in depth, a little bit more complicated, um, requires a lot more willpower and dedication, but tips nonetheless to help you uh, lose body fat or just get generally healthy uh, in general. Yeah. And uh, if you haven't seen the previous ones, go back and watch them. Um, You don't really have to watch them in order. You can kind of pick and choose if you want. I would recommend watching the previous two in order, though, because those last two episodes we covered a total of six different tips, like practical tactics that you can use to to, uh, lose body fat. And the first three are very basic and... Again, I want to make the big clarification that basic does not mean ineffective. In fact, I would highly, 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 I don't know how many times I've said highly, but highly recommend you try those to the best of your ability and squeeze them for all that they're worth before you ever touch the other three that we covered in the last episode because the first three do not require all that much. You don't have to change a whole bunch of things in order to get results. It's just... A few keystone habits. Yeah. Don't think that just because it's harder means it's more effective. Or because it requires a little more thought that means it's going to produce better results. The other, the, you know, first part of that series is really good if you just apply it. Right. Like, big emphasis on that. Just because something is harder, and this really goes for anything, just because something is physically or mentally harder to do does not mean that it's more effective. Right. Like, Basics, guy. Like there is something to be said about doing the basics extraordinarily well mm. in anything, but especially when you're trying to lose body fat, which is probably one of the hardest things you can do. Why mm. complicate it any more than you need? Yeah, yeah. That's just my thoughts. Yeah, uh, but I'm also probably the laziest personal trainer <laughs> and fitness expert you'll ever meet. Uh, I like the easy way, and I'm guessing you probably do too. You want abs? Use the easy ways for all they're worth. You know? Well, yeah, and just to back up what Gus is saying is, you know, that we've gotten to a place in the fitness industry that we want to have to really think hard about what we're learning when in reality it just boils down to some of those things that, you know, like drinking more water, eating smaller portions, stop snacking, that, you know, those can really be powerful they really work very well if done every day for a really long time yeah i mean and and here's the thing again too guys like if someone's trying to sell you abs in a week quickly run in the other direction and that let's be honest that's what the market wants you will here's the thing on the quick fixes you will actually add time to the amount of time it takes you to get your goal by trying those quick fixes because as soon as you try it you waste that week learning that whoa this actually doesn't work very well or i feel terrible or you know what i've I've even heard diets that have hospitalized people but you know what no they didn't get their abs i'm just kidding uh it didn't work you're actually adding time to the total amount of times it takes you to get abs and you elect to go the one week ab fix or whatever it is like well and i think that every time you do something that doesn't work it's an emotional letdown it is But when you have emotional letdown after emotional letdown after emotional letdown, they just build on each other. Eventually, you get so discouraged that what Gus is saying is like a seven-day effort requires so much work because you're so discouraged. Yeah. Think about it like a bank account. Every time you do something and you fail, like you have that much less available to put towards your next plan. Yeah. Um, So anyway – Go back and watch those. Big on the basics. 
Look at the long game. Like now, I will say, you can absolutely make progress in a week. Like don't misinterpret what we're saying. Mm-hmm. But don't go for the quick fix. Slow and steady wins the race. Cliche, I know, but guess what? We're probably the only ones that'll tell you this. Like, because mm-hmm. we don't make any money on this show. Like, yeah. until C4 starts sponsoring <laughs> us. Like, <laughs> we don't make any money off it. So, like, we, we really want to give you relevant, applicable content that will give you results. It will if you follow it. I promise. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So, today's episode. What happens when it all goes south? As they say, the hell in a handbasket. All right. Yes. So, what are you going to do? Are you going to... And uh, there's one guarantee. What's that? It will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Life has a weird way of, you know, curb stomping you. It's just... If it's going to punch you, it will. All right? Yeah. You've all experienced it. We've experienced it. Just when we think everything's going great, it just punches you in the gut. And then, you know... But... What are you going to do to keep yourself on track when that happen when that happens? Because it will happen if it hasn't already. You have to have some kind of plan to fall back on. The problem is most people don't, and whatever they're trying, they just say, mm, "Try again next time." Like, and they let it go, let themselves go, and it all goes downhill. And the key behind this, there is freedom and discipline, even if it's a very small amount of discipline. So today's episode is about how you can approach these situations and what is your backup plan when uh, when things go south? Do you have any? So, you know, thinking through what we've been talking about for a few weeks and we've given you some pretty actionable steps, you know, whether it's smaller plates or drinking more water or portions or thinking about the more advanced things that we talked about last week with food journaling and intermittent fasting and some of these things. Okay. So what happens when in life, right, is we, we get this thought immediately, like I, I watched this video, I read this book, and now I want to do this new thing. I want to make whatever a change. It is. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is. And then you create a plan or you start doing that thing and you know maybe a few days go by. If you're really disciplined, maybe a week goes by or, or even you know two, three, four weeks until it doesn't happen. Until that day you don't food journal, until that day you mess up, um, that day that you forget to meal prep or you don't bring your water bottle or all the... Okay, so in that moment, that's what we're talking about today is how to approach life in a way that what is your plan when that happens and what are you going to do? Because the, the likelihood of you messing up is very very high <laughs> oh no it's a hundred percent yeah it, it's, like, it's, every, it's, no it, one has this clear no like unblemished path from where the success is pretty messy you know i was uh watching one time a friend of mine whose sister co-owns a gym with him and she had put an instagram post or maybe it was a video or something out on facebook and what she said was that she bounces back very quickly and that's almost like a superpower when it comes to weight loss or fitness and, and making sure you stay on track. Because what she was, what she wanted to do was kind of encourage people. And she was doing like a 21 day, it was like a combination of like a workout, meal plan, devotional. It was, a, it was a, all of it. She had gotten to day 20 and had been perfect. Which by the way is rare. Yes. And... She didn't do it. Like that day, just for whatever reason, she didn't read the devotional. She didn't follow the, you know, the A, B, C, D. And the next day, she wanted to encourage a lot of people. And so what she put out, she has a lot of followers. And she said, basically, I called my day 21 my day 20. So it was almost like she just, you know what? All right, wake up tomorrow, start again. Yes, yep. and she said that for the life of her fitness journey, that is something that she has done so well, which is bounce back quickly. But what normally happens, Charlie? Oh, day 20 turns into day 90 to day 150, and then it was a long lost thought of a dream that happened yep. for that 20 days that you saw amazing results. All or nothing mentality. And so really being able to bounce back quickly. And to me, you know, as I was reading through what Gus wrote, and I feel like this is something that is 
the more time you've been doing something, the better you're going to be at it. Light bulb moment. <laughs> oh man, that's deep. <laughs> I would have never guessed. But it's, it, you know, it, it's so hard to, to get started because in the first, there's no way that in one month you can have the ability and the experience that somebody has in 10 years. Right. Yeah. And the, here's a great example. New Year's resolutions. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. everyone can relate to this pretty much. Like, they start January 1 with these lofty goals of, like, this year's going to be different. Yeah. Nope. But I think one of the big things, too, if I'm, if I'm looking at this from maybe getting started as opposed to where I am now on my fitness journey, having accountability is a, is a, is a oh. good plan B. In other words, and this, we can do this in other areas of our life, but pretty much saying, like, hey – you know, best friend, or hey, spouse, or hey, Gus. Insert person that you don't want to disappoint. Yes. I so am, it might, it's probably not your spouse. Yeah. Like, and if those people are, they really care about you, and you communicate it well, you're going to ask them, I need you to hold me accountable, right? Mm-hmm. I, know, I know my weaknesses. I know the places that I'm going to fall short. I know if you can check in with me once a week, to make sure that I'm still doing what I intend to do. That is a safe proof. That's like a great way to offset you doing what you will do. That's a fantastic one. So accountability is huge and whatever. Like that's a great – like I didn't even personally think about like when you fail and you get back up and having accountability to that. But that's an awesome contingency plan or plan B. Uh, my version of it is a little bit different. I have like these – Tiny little action. I mean, like, just so small, they're probably laughable. But I know that if I do them, I'm still making progress on what I want to get done. And now, to your credit, sometimes there are, doesn't happen often, but there are some days when I don't do those things either, but the next day I do. Mm -hmm. I get right back up and I go on. But I have just a very small list of things. And for uh, health reasons, so for example... For fitness right now, I do more so a style of powerlifting workout than I do like CrossFit or some other. And so like I actually – I do train every day but it looks a little bit different. And when I say train, I mean like I do something Mm -hmm. even if it's just – so contingency plan for my workout program is I just go for a walk. The walk isn't specified in how long it has to be. I like it. I just get outside and I start walking. And I know he's seen me do that a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so those are the days when I'm just like, eh, I don't really want to do anything. Again, I'm lazy. But so I just go out and I walk and I'm still making progress. And sometimes like not making progress or at least maintaining your results is just as good as making progress because you're not going backwards. Well, and I think that's because Gus has a very clear idea of what winning looks like for him. I do. And so some of us sometimes want winning to be this thing that maybe is either out of our reach or what we define our winning like the person's the other person's win. For example, if we have somebody that we really aspire to be like. I mean it happens, you know, yeah, the comparison yeah. syndrome. Then you start defining winning for you Based upon their success. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that's and, very, a very dangerous game, by the yes. way. Yes. So what Gus has done is simply by saying, and it's it's just accepting that for him, a walk is sufficient. Like the power, like, I, I, can I give, I'm going to give a little example. Please do. So I used to work out pretty much almost every day. And used re- to? <laughs> <laughs> so I've never seen him miss a workout. <laughs> well, now, and, I, and I'm going to talk about this, now I rest on Sundays. Like, I don't ever work out on Sundays. Oh, you rebel. <laughs> but for, I, don't, I don't miss a day. So for, the, to... for the longest time, I didn't miss. I mean, I, if I missed, it was because for some crazy reason, my schedule did not allow. In other words, it was it was either a very busy day, we were traveling, and maybe the scheduling or wh- whatever. So I would treat... Well, I would treat a rest day as it's forced upon me. And yeah, it's yeah, always, yeah. it was always kind of this feeling of like, oh, I really would rather work out today, but I have to rest. So I was never, about 
five years ago, probably. Um, it was, you know, as probably Anderson was born, maybe four years ago. I, I really was, Alicia was volunteering at the, the, at the church in the children's ministry, and I would often come work out before we went to church. Mm-hmm. And so I would end up being a little bit late. And then finally she, was t- she told me, she was like, hey, I really don't want to miss the worship because that happens first. Could you please get here on time? It made me feel really bad because I was coming to work out before church. And so finally, I just said, you know what? Sundays, I am not going to work out. Jesus, you can wait. <laughs> and, and it was amazing how the second that I gave myself permission in my head to not work out. In other words, I defined in my head on a Sunday, you don't work out. And, and what, how this can translate for you, and I think where it happens to Gus, is Gus has defined that it, going for a walk regardless of how long it is, is sufficient for him. And and that's not all Gus does. Obviously, those biceps didn't grow themselves. But, they did, actually. <laughs> but, I did nothing for this. <laughs> but for you, it's important to define what it means to work out. And then that frees you of this ideal or this expectation that it should be more than what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um. So to give you an idea of what my version of success is, is I just go to bed knowing that I have personally made myself even a fraction of a percentage point better than when I woke up. And so for me, going on a walk checks that box. Like Now, my normal workout, and I do the exact same thing when I'm lifting weights. It's like I don't make huge gains very quickly. In fact, like Jim Wendler, for those of you who know that it, who he is and you don't even have to he he has this philosophy that I've kind of adopted a long time ago myself and it's like you you start too light in the weights and then you like every four weeks you increase by five pounds the number that you're working off of so like every month I am not making huge increases in the amount that I'm putting on the bar but again I'm in it for the long game guys like I don't and so for me, that's checking the box. Like I can go to bed knowing that I got a little bit better that day and I'm okay with that. And so like, but you have to know what that is for you too. And we can't make it. If you like shoot us like an Instagram message or an email or something and you're like, hey, I don't know where to start on this. Like feel free to do that, by the way. Like, yeah. You know, like I think. Can this pop up? Oh here? yeah, we can do that right yeah? now. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Uh, that's Instagram. Um, so I think. Uh, <laughs> but. We'll help you like figure this out if you're like super confused, but the whole premise of this is, is you have to have something to where like if your day goes to crap or you just really don't feel like doing anything, like what is the one thing you're going to do where you can go to bed knowing that you still make progress? If we're talking food, for me, that's just like on the meals that I do eat, because sometimes I miss meals, like I'll be honest, like I don't, I'm not perfect in my nutrition, it's... Yeah. And I think we talked about this a little bit last time. For me, it's every meal that I do eat, I have some sort of protein, lean protein. If I do that, it's like, it's a win, you know? Mm-hmm. Because, like, and that, even if I'm eating out or at fast food restaurant, I like, hey, can I get a double patty? Like, Big Mac or like whatever. I don't eat Big Mac, but that's an example. Uh, I, I used to. Um, and they were delicious. But you get the idea. Like I would double down on the protein because I know that for me, that was checking the box. That's my contingency plan. That's my fallback. That's like, man, like today I wasn't on point on nutrition, but I know for a fact that I still had my protein, which allows me to have the guns, mm-hmm. as Charlie said. I'm kidding. But it does allow <laughs> me to continually progress in my goals. All right. So I guess it really ties back to like, what do you want? Like if it's abs, okay, then here's like – a really good contingency plan for something like that. You know what? Carry around a jug of water. Like, mm-hmm. You're much more likely to drink more water. You'll probably be less hungry. If you just carry one around, I'm not even saying drink from it. Just carry the dang thing. That's a pretty good one. You know? Like, it's a start. You can check the box that day knowing that, like, okay, at least I did a little bit. You know? Yeah. I think another thing, too, if we're, if we're talking on how to counter basically messing up, is just having a gym membership, you know, yeah, like really. plugging into a group of people that actually like want 
you to be successful. I would even take that a little farther. Have some like buddies that you can work out with. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And one of the reasons, you know, CrossFit has been growing so much primarily because of the community. Uh, and, yeah, and you know, people have friends it. in classes and now they there's this camaraderie, but you know, if you're if you know yourself, right? If you know that you very likely will fall off the wagon. Mm-hmm. And most you know, are that way. Yeah. I, I, human. You know, find, you know, and this kind of goes back to accountability, but it's finding like a gym or a community of people that basically you can, you can embrace and, and then really get to know. And when you miss, they're going to reach out to you. I mean, it happens right. here all the time. People tell me, you know, I can't miss because I'm on a text thread with people from the gym and right. they're going to ask me where I've been. And that is know? a huge huge thing that I think honestly I think it's probably been the linchpin for CrossFit is yeah. the fact that it's like a community based class where you're forced to get to know people and make friends with them and so when you miss yeah, you've got all these buddies saying like hey where are you at Like, and that alone is like it's, it's a game changer so like to Charlie's credit accountability or finding someone to be accountable to is probably going to be your best bet um, but I would even take it all back one step further having a contingency plan is just that have you done the planning to know what that is? It can it can literally be anything. It shouldn't be something that takes a lot of effort though. Because keep in mind, like we're talking about days when like your kid's crying up until like two in the morning. You roll out of bed, your dog pooped, you stepped in it. Like these kind of days, all which have happened at my house and mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I walked like I was one morning. I walked out and walking down the hallway, I just got hit by the stench. And, like, I turned the corner, my entire living room rug was covered in doggy poo-poo. Yeah. That night before, I was, like, begging with Brittany, saying, like, you know, because we just had a, a newborn. I was like, please let the dog stay inside. I literally, like, stood up for them the, the, the night before. I walk out the next morning. By the way, my alarm goes off at uh, 3.57 in the morning. I walk out there at 4 in the morning, essentially, to just poop everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. It's, that was a contingency plan day, guys. Right. Like, it, but here's the point behind this: like, if you don't have that in place that day, all it's a loss. Like, you know, you have to have some kind of plan in order to get yourself back on the wheel. Even if it's just accountability, at least you have someone saying, like, you know, you missed that day, and they're texting, you, "Hey, where you at?" Like, well, my dog's pooped on the carpet. I'll be at, I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, you show up. Like, but most people, it's just like as soon as you break that chain of momentum, it's the momentum starts building in the other way. And to to add to this point too is be be open and honest with someone. Not you know whether it's accountability or maybe it's maybe you are struggling. Like maybe you're watching this right now and you're thinking to yourself like, man, I don't even know where to start with a contingency plan. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Basics. That's where you know somebody outside of you can look at your situation better than you can. Oh, so true. And having, first of all, the courage to be honest with someone and say, I need help. I don't know what to do, but I realize that I need to do something. That statement can truly get you out of yep. whatever funk or, you know, bad place that you're in. Shoot us a message. <laughs> Seriously. And it, I mean, and I would even encourage you to talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. I've, I've had right. conversations like this is, you know, but, but when somebody is in that place where they're just being honest and they really, they really want help, that's where we can help them the most, you know, but, yep. the, but if you kind of act like nothing's wrong, like maybe you've missed three weeks or you've been off for a month. And you're acting like everything's okay, but internally you're just really broken and dying because you really wish it wasn't so. And then one month turns into 10 years. And I've seen that. And you've put on 50 pounds yep. and now, but all you have to do is let somebody in. And that's the whole point of this episode is yes. like how to avoid that 10 year Yes, yes. And it happens way more often than yep. we would want. So again, think in terms something is better than nothing. And that's that's my walk, guys. Like, yeah, it's just getting out and like going for a five minute stroll. Hey, check. You know, it's 
someone that he's accountable to. You know, it's just whatever yours is. And defining success realistically, I yep. think, is another piece to that. Whereas you're not, you know, if you just had a baby, you know, in the last few months, like, let's be honest, for one year, like, you cannot. It's hard. Yeah, you can't be back in what you were doing before kids or before this child. Like, like having a baby and the commitment with that for at least, well, forever, <laughs> but at least uh, for, for moms especially in that first 12 months is pretty. It's hard. Like, you need to define success as caring for that baby and any type of exercise you do is just a positive. Like it's just an right. add on because if you unrealistically define success, like I gotta be back, I gotta be at this place, I gotta be at this number, at this weight, at this, you, you know, by quit. this. Yeah, you're gonna, I mean, it's, and so having a realistic grip on, plus if you're, a, let's just say you're a hard charging CEO and you know, you're about to enter your busy season in the next four to five months are the busiest season of your life. You shouldn't think that working out every day is something that, that you can do. That I mean, even though you could do it at another time, you might need to realistically transition into, hey, if I'm able to go take a walk, you know, a couple times a week and lift some weights another one or, or two times. Or even, even drop and do 10 push-ups on your Oh, yeah, day. or wake up and, yeah, so. That's a check. It can be, know? literally, it can be anything. We don't have to live within this box of fitness and nutrition that makes it feel like it's got to be this perfect picture. It can be anything, and I think that's where having somebody who is knowledgeable, can coach you, the accountability piece, who's encouraging, that all those things can tie into that really well. Yep. And um, guys, like, again, stick to the basics. Like, don't make this harder than it needs to be. Like, if you're sitting there scratching your head for an hour trying to figure out what this is, like, you're thinking too hard. You know, like, the goal of this is not to, like, make huge strides in progress. This is your fail safe. This is on the bad days what happens. Like, it's just checking the box. Don't, it's not... Just whatever you can do to keep moving along towards your goal is fine. That's enough. And you're going you're gonna to actually have more of these days than you think. But it just needs to be mm-hmm. something to keep you on the train. And so it's like when you complicate things, like that's – complication is the enemy of progress. And so like don't make it hard on yourselves. You're already stressed. Like why would you make it in? Go for a walk. Do some push-ups. Like – Read one paragraph out of that book you were trying to read. I don't know, like whatever yeah. your goal is, it doesn't have to be fitness and nutrition. It could just be if you're like an author or something, like write a sentence. You know, you're still moving forward. You still made progress. You know, you went to bed a little bit better than you did the night before, and that's what. That's it. That's great. You know, it, yeah. over time, those results are going to be huge. By the way, yeah. So, um, you have anything else to add to that? Charlie? No, I think you know this is one of those episodes that you. You probably want to rewatch, yes, and, and, and you want to make sure that you fully kind of understand what we're saying. And I hope that you know that one of the that if you're watching this, you're already taking steps to counter this, right? Because yes. the fact that you are watching, you know, a, a, a thirty minute video about nutrition, exercise, fitness habits, lifestyle, all those things, you're already kind of being in the proactive mindset because. You know, I I like to think of this like a a lot of like, how can we make habits in our life that keep us going within the boundaries or within the bumpers uh, of the bowling lane, you know, to stay focused, right? So like in the world of exercise, I know that if I work out, whatever that may be for you, if I work out, you know, if I'm um, if I'm mindful of like how I feel when I work, when I eat and the nutrition, if I you know, surround myself with people who are going to encourage exercise and health and that type of lifestyle. Um, obviously, as a trainer, you know, if I'm encouraging others and, and, you know, making sure that other people are getting healthy, if I'm doing all these things, I'm creating this kind of like structure in my life. But we have to realize that there's times that all that's going to be gone, you know, vacation, there's times that all that is going to not be in place. And then what do you do then? Yeah, what happens? Know. So that you don't follow. I guess what? I can walk on vacation. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, that's a good like, litmus test. What do you know. do on vacation? You, can, you know, like, yeah. Those are, 
And, and to be honest with you, what I do, and, and I know not everybody does it, I just do what I usually do here. I go to a gym, <laughs> I work out, I eat healthy. Like It doesn't look very much different for me. You'd be shocked at how much of a normal routine you can maintain on vacation. Mm-hmm. It's just most of you don't try. Mm-hmm. You're like, vacation! You know, yeah. like... But this makes me think, too, what would be really cool is to maybe do another episode on, on habits. You know, I think so. Because I think habits are a great proactive approach to offset derailing. It's really the core of this is that. Yeah. You know, what's your habit that you're going to default to? Yeah. So, but Okay. So um, message us if you don't have any uh, clue what you're doing. Uh, and that's <laughs> that sounds harsh. That's a legitimate. No, we, we really want to hear uh, from you. We really yeah. do. I'm just a little bit more less graceful in my words sometimes. Uh, so... But uh, I think that's that's the offer of the day. Like yeah. seriously, like there's no strings attached. Like, shoot us a message on Instagram or like email us or whatever. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, outside of that, that's all I got. That's all I got. Thanks, all folks. Right. I appreciate right, guys. you guys tuning in. Come back next week for another Boom Fit Bros episode. Cinco. <laughs>